Hi, I'm Dan. I welcome to your brush garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to redo a video that I did about two years ago on Createx reducers. It's just an update to the video of the Createx line of reducers, what's new, where they're at with them, and my opinion, and how I use them. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications, a couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with YouTube algorithm. A thumbs up would be great. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. It really helps out with the channel. And with that, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, Createx has 4011, 4012, 4013, and 4020, which is right here. I don't have it anymore in my shop. I used about three quarters of a bottle of it. Before I had a little bit of climate control in my garage, I got the 4020. I'll explain that in a minute, but I will be going over that as well. I'm going to start with the 4011. The 4011 is the go-to reducer across all of Createx paints. Now, with that said, I use mostly Wicket, Illustration, and just regular old Createx paint. I don't use a lot of this, but sometimes I do, and if I do, I'll use the 4011. But when it comes to the Wicket colors or any other paint that I spray with Createx, I use the 4011. Now, also, when I first started airbrushing, I used to use the 4012. The 4012 was out. Well, actually, it wasn't when I first started airbrushing, but when I first came across Createx paints and I started using them many, many years ago, the 4012 was already out. So some of you that see my videos before, you've heard me say that they discontinued this product, and they did. They discontinued it because, and I want to get this right, so I'm going to go over to the computer just so I word it correctly. But the 4012 reducer is a more aggressive reducer than the 4011. But what it was causing was they were getting some seeding problems. It really wasn't playing nice with their, their Candy 2.0 line back here. You're getting a lot of gelling. I had a lot of problems and I didn't know what it was from. But when I mixed the 4012 in with the carrier that you needed for the candies, and at the time it wasn't UVLS gloss, it was the 4030 bouncing clear and the whole mix of it was just gelling up everybody's guns so it didn't play nice with some of the paints that they came out with later on with Createx. so they found that the 4011 just played nice with all of them so they discontinued the 4012 and they went back to the 4011 as their go-to reducer and the reason why you see the 4012 out on the shelves is because they had warehouses full of this stuff and being distributed ready to store so they're going to empty the warehouses on it so I use it anymore. I mean, you could use it in your paint if you have it, but what I'm saying is why get used to it? It's going to be off the shelf sooner or later, so you might as well you know, use the 4011. So next is the 4013. Well, the difference between the 4013 and the 4011, I like both of them. Now, I'm going to continue to use the 4011 because I have no issues with it. But the difference between the 4013 and the 4011 is the type of alcohol that's in it. You'll see here that in the 4011, the 4011 contains propylene glycol monolithyl ether acetate, whereas the 4013 just contains regular old isopropyl alcohol. What it does is help flush water from the paint and reduces dry time on the surface, and it could aid in helping with tip dry. But what I would recommend is that you start with the 4011, and if it's not producing the results that you, know, you want, maybe you're getting some tip dry, you can try the 4013. Now, I'm not saying the 4013 is gonna you know, solve all your problems, because tip dry can be uh, just a variety of issues of why you're getting the tip dry, but the 4013 is a really nice reducer to try. It works really well. So for the 4012, we're gonna go over to the computer here. The 4012 contains acetone, as you can see here. As far as the usage goes, under dilutant, the 4020 assists drying and curing in humid conditions. So that was what it was made for. But you got to be careful because if you use just the 4020 alone, it can create a lot of problems with your paint. It can create seeding. It can leave particles behind. It, it, it's not meant to be that way. It's meant to be mixed as a cocktail. So, you know, if you have, I don't know, let's just say five or six drops in your cup of the 4011, you really only want to put, start with one and then possibly two, if you're not getting results you want, drops of the 4020. That's what it's made to do. Make sure you mix it up good. Again, I really wouldn't recommend that unless you're trying to paint on a very, you know, 90 degree humid day. Other than that, 
that's what I mean. I really didn't see a need for it or use for it because I had that bottle for years for the amount that you're going to use. But if you do have those type of conditions, it's definitely worth a try. Well, all right, there you have it. Hopefully that answers all your questions about the Createx line of reducers. Hope you got something from this video. If you did, you guys know the drill. Consider subscribing, hit those links, thumbs up, comments. That all really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. It helps this channel grow. We're growing. I really appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you watching. With that, we'll see you in the next video.